John Green Deer is a Renaissance man, and in so many ways, he is self-taught. This is where I work. I grab whatever the creator puts down on the ground and, and use it and make something out of it. I love turning. It's, it's fun. When I do a bowl, this is what I do for fun. There's a bit of yourself that goes into each of these. If you do more than preserve, if you perpetuate, you revitalize, you rekindle, you re-inspire, you, then you're doing something. In the Ho-Chunk we'll call them waske, waske shurosh. There they put something in. From ancient ways to high-tech tools, John explores the natural world around him. I got a drone. I'm a licensed operator of the craft and he has Wisconsin's Ho-Chunk heritage at his fingertips. One of the things I've, I've always been enamored by are old traditional cultural properties. I'd like to see the, the topography of our hunting grounds, of our homestead, and I tend to envision the history that lies underneath what we all see. And this is a vantage point like no other. I really do see Wisconsin as, as our homelands. The ancient ways are a stark contrast to the life John had experienced as a young man in a rock band. I was a musician, so I played the Fox Valley circuit. Typical rock star life, drinking, drugs, cigarettes, and rock and roll, not, not much sleep. I was working at the casino dealing cards. That's when John realized he didn't like the cards life was dealing him. Wow, I could do so much better. So in 1998, I took my, my last drink. After some time away from alcohol and drugs and tobacco, the appropriate thing to do would be go to school. I applied, reapplied, I've called the admissions office, and they just said, John, you have to stop calling here. He was denied admission to the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point. That wasn't the only thing I was struggling with, having a child, having not been in school for 10 years, um, it, being a person of color, and things were getting tough financially. And John was also struggling with his self-image. Being 360 pounds. I don't know if you know what that's like, but you can't fit in a typical desk. You have to make it look like it's not a problem. It's a problem. That's when UW Marathon County gave John what he wanted most, a chance. I still hold that two-year campus in the highest regards, you know, because they admitted me. You know, they took the risk. Two years later, John transferred into UW Stevens Point, the same school that had earlier denied him admission. There was a pull toward policy and politics and public administration. After graduation, he was appointed to the UW Stevens Point Alumni Board. You take a look at the academic success rate of Native American males, it's, you know, it's a very rare thing to be in that spot. As the years passed, John heard a steady stream of voices encouraging him to run for tribal president. He started getting these text messages, run, 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 run. John was elected president of the Ho-Chunk Nation in 2011. We came in like a wave and I was very young. Representing the Ho-Chunk Nation, he's met world leaders. The picture you see right there was when I went to go see President Obama. By this point, John had turned his life around and had overcome his addictions and lost more than 140 pounds. I know that I speak with a lot of people that have issues with weight and I'm not the Ho-Chunk Slim good body by any means. I have a 40-mile route to take my bike on, so I ride down to Wisconsin Rapids and I ride back. Motivated by his success, John set new goals and took advantage of the 75-mile commute from Stevens Point to tribal headquarters in Black River Falls. Some of the most amazing things happen when you're by yourself in solitude. In solitude, John taught himself the Ho-Chunk language. That's about the hardest thing ever. My name is John Greendeer. Mashu Skam, Hingaidi, White Feather. And I am president of the Ho Chunk Nation. In 2012, he stood before the legislature to deliver the State of the Tribes Address, representing Wisconsin's 11 sovereign tribal nations. For all those listening today, 
I say Waiwanan, Yowanko, Miigwech, Anushik, Iyuguyan, Wainikinapwe. And finally, thank you from the tribes of our great state of Wisconsin. Yeah. That particular event was way more than I could handle as a young Ho Chunk person. I felt that was my doom was awaiting. And he learned that after just one term as president, it was time to leave tribal politics in the rearview mirror. John opted not to seek re-election. There is nothing that stands in front of me that I fear. From past to present, John hopes to empower Native communities with his life lessons about family, health, and education. The strongest nations are those that have families that are standing up on their own, that are taking care of themselves, that are getting educated, that are working, and that are doing their best to follow their way of life. That's it. That is what sovereignty will look like in our future.